これからみんなでめちゃくちゃ踊って騒ごう騒ごう What's up, YouTube? My name is Charles Gold, and welcome to the Chops Exchange. On the Chops Exchange, I'm going to show you how to take chops, licks, phrases, any kind of rhythms you could ever think of from different genres of drummers of all different styles, and show you how you can apply it to the genre of jazz. In my book, music is music, drums is drums, rhythm is rhythm. We all got to count, and we all got to feel good when we're playing. So I don't really believe in the whole biases of, oh, you can't play that because it's not from this specific recording. Or you're a rock drummer, you can't play this or that. No, I believe you take any licks and you can fit them into jazz and do whatever you really want with all styles of music. So for the first series, we're gonna tackle The Beast, one of the, I mean, the greatest I've ever seen. You love him, you've seen him, Eric Moore. Now, you may not have even heard of Eric Moore, but you've probably seen his video that he did. It was a cover of uh, Missy Elliott's Get Your Freak On. Unbelievable. Like you, I was mesmerized the first time I saw it. I had even non-drummers sending me this link because it was so incredible. So I thought, hey, why not do this video? I've always been a big fan of Eric Moore's ever since his uh, Guitar Center drum off, stuff he did with Suicidal Tendencies. Just his viral videos are crazy. And I even took a lesson with him one time. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to break down and play the first three measure kind of crazy fill he did during this video. But first, I wanna discuss um, something that's very important in jazz drumming and that's the difference of sound. The thing with jazz drumming is that the sound of it is different than most other styles you're gonna hear. Things that are really important with the sound of jazz is definitely number one, your cymbals, number two, your heads, and number three, but not as important, sticks. Also, gotta throw in drum sizes in there. So let's start with the cymbals. A little more washy than you would normally be uh, used to, but still has stick definition. As long as it passes those two tests and maybe a little bit darker on the dark side, you'll be, you'll be fine. And if you have rivets in your cymbal, that's a big plus too. Heads are very important for the sound of uh, jazz drumming. In the early recordings, there was only one choice but to use calfskin heads. In the 60s, cats started using uh, coated, coated uh, plastic heads because you didn't have to worry about your drums going out of tune if the you know if you had humid weather or something like that. So to start with, I highly, highly recommend using Coded Ambassador Remo heads. One ply, nice and thin. You wanna get a nice, full, open tone out of your drums. You don't wanna deaden them. That being said, if you're used to playing harder and playing harder styles of music, it may be hard to get used to them at first. And lastly, but certainly not least, we'll talk about sticks. Sticks, you might wanna use, in general, a smaller stick. The most important thing is that sticks change the sound of your cymbal a lot. And you're trying, and so really think about the stick definition you're gonna get on your cymbal, on uh, your ride cymbal beat. I personally use the Vader Swing model. I like that it has a, a nice uh, taper on it that gives me nice bounce, because you do a lot of you know, closed rolls in jazz, and I like it that it also gives me stick definition. And now the moment you guys have all been waiting for. Let's check out this lick. Good lord, that's crazy. Absolutely insane. But we're gonna be able to do it, guys. We're gonna we're gonna play this. So when I play this fill, I latch onto a couple things. One, I notice that it's it starts left hand lead, and it's mainly a lot of times inverted paradiddles. And so just try to look where you can find the inverted paradiddles. And then also, you're going to want to watch out for that tricky section before bar three where it comes on the, the uh of the fourth beat into the one E of the third bar. So just make sure you really can hear that one because that tripped me up quite a bit. All right, now let's try this bad boy at 46 BPM. I know it's slow, but... You know, sometimes you got to start all the way down.
and now the moment you've all been waiting for. Ah, tempo. 188 BPM. So for this next section, I want to cut up the very beginning of this fill and show you how you can use something that's very rem reminiscent of something that maybe somebody like Philly Joe would play. And it's a really, really easy lick, but it sounds great and you can use it in straight ahead situations. Now this fill alone won't sound very good, but if you play it in more of a 3-4 four over 4-4 four, four, uh, context, then it starts to sound really hip. Alright, so for this lick, and for the interest of time, we're going to start off at 78 BPM. It's not too hard once you get it, so we'll build it up from there. Notice the way I've been playing this lick is a little different than the way Eric Moore plays it on the uh, on the clip. The reason for this is because in jazz there are different sounds that we use that you don't normally see in other styles of music. For instance, we'll do things like just play the open hi hat, like do sounds like, and you're gonna laugh at me right now by going T -t 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 just by itself with no other underlying backbeat, or we'll play like a cross stick where we hit the stick with our right hand against the stick with our left hand and we're pressing the left hand stick into the head so that it makes a different type of cross stick sound that's easier to play quick snare drum passages with and it has a different sound. Now I'm going to show you how I would apply the main three bar lick in more of like a trading situation and you know when you're practicing it doesn't have to be exactly four bars, eight bars all the time. Just get comfortable with that first and then you can start to really apply it in a more uh, succinct way. That was Eric Moore's crazy fill on Missy Elliott's Get Your Freak On. It was only three bars, so you can fool around with it as much as you want. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button, throw me a like, and throw in a request in there too. I cannot wait to make another video for you guys. But until the next one, stay tuned and keep shedding.